Welcome to our Let's Talk for Metroid 2, The Return of Samus on the Game Boy. So if you watched our first Let's Talk or have been watching our Let's Plays for Super Metroid, you know that I'm trying to go through and play all of the Metroid games um, and get them all sort of Let's Played, I guess is a good way to say it. Certain games, however, like Metroid 1 and Metroid 2, Return of Samus, I don't actually have... Um, the ability to record any video, so instead I've taken pictures or screenshots of my 3DS, which is what I'm playing them on, um, and then I made these Let's Talks, which is just me essentially sitting here and talking to you about the game. So, let's go ahead and get started. Metroid 2 The Return of Samus uh, obviously takes place after Metroid 1. Um, Samus is actually sent by the Federation to a planet called SR388, which is the home planet of the Metroids. Um, essentially, the Federation believes them to be too, too much of a threat um, because the underlying sort of plot in Metroid 1 is that Mother Brain and the Space Pirates are trying to utilize the Metroids as a weapon. Um, so, anyway, the Federation thinks that they're a massive issue, so they try to eradicate them. They fail absolutely horribly, so they send in Samus and thus you have Metroid 2 The Return of Samus and this time you're on S388 a much different planet and also one great thing about this game is you'll run into a lot of ruins which um, if I'm not mistaken were left behind by the Chozo which are an ancient like bird-like race um, and also the the creators the Metroids so anyway uh, this game is right off the bat entirely different from Metroid 1 uh, Aside from being black and white, unless you're playing on the Super Game Boy, which of course is color, um, it's zoomed in, like, really close, uh, as opposed to Metroid 1, which is, has Samus like that small, this one has her like that big, and there's more detail in the sprites. Um, as well, there are no bosses, or there's 39 bosses. It's entirely how you want to look at it. Um, the whole point of the game is literally hunt down and kill 39 Metroids. Now, the inspirations from the Alien series start to seep in quite a bit. Um, Ridley, who I talked about in Metroid 1, uh, actually, that name was supposed to be sort of a nod to Ripley, who's the main character of the Alien trilogy and Alien series, sort of. Uh, but right away, you're greeted by a Metroid that's on the ground, um, when you get into SR388, and this sort of creature busts out of its shell. Uh, the creature that busts out is sort of an evolved form of the Metroid called the Alpha Metroids. Um, Alpha Metroids are sort of these weird, like, bug-looking things that they fly around, um, and they just try to slam into you. Uh, and you just pretty much pump missiles into them, and they're dead. And they're really, really easy to kill. So those things... I don't really consider boss fights. Uh, so that really isn't a boss fight, although you fight quite a few of the alphas. Um, eventually you will come against the Gamma Metroids. Um, gamma Metroids, Zacks, I think they're a little bit bigger, I may be mistaken, but I believe they're a little bit bigger than the alphas. And um, they shoot this sort of like lightning shock thing that goes in an arc in front of it. And if you shoot your missiles right at that moment towards them, your missile will be negated. So. That's a little annoying because you end up wasting missiles if you're not timing your shots. Um, a lot of the progress of Metroid 2 is essentially kill X number of Metroids on your your counter of 39 and boom you are now now the lava level on the planet has gone down so it unlocks more areas for you to go, more Metroids for you to hunt. Um, and so that's fun but after you kill the Gamma Metroids, uh, enough of them to, you'll eventually come across the Zeta Metroids. The Zeta Metroids are actually completely different than the Alpha and Gamma ones. They actually have like legs and they're, they're almost like, um, I know this is sort of a fast forward thing, but in Super Metroid, uh, Mother Brain, sort of what her body composition almost looks like is what they look like. Um, and they, they fly around just annoying the heck out of you and slamming into you. And, and uh, yeah, the Zetas are really, really annoying, but not as annoying as their even more evolved form, which is the Omega Metroid. Um, the Omega Metroids are just 
I think they take about 60 to 70 missiles pumped into them before they die. There's only, thankfully, I think three of them in the entire game. So that is a big plus because those guys hurt a lot. Um, one big notable upgrade uh, that they added in this, it's one thing I didn't touch on in the last Let's Talk about Metroid 1 is the upgrades. Um, but one big notable upgrade that they have in this one is called the Spider Ball. Um, so essentially you get to go into Morph Ball form and then if you press down again, Samus will actually cling to whatever surface the ball is on so then you can move essentially vertically up a wall or you could be on the ceiling and be going across the ceiling. Um, I think that's another reason why the level design is so superior in Metroid 2 to Metroid 1 is because the designers had to think, okay, this can be exploited here if they use the spider ball, this can be exploited here, this can be exploited here. We really got to make sure that this is not happening, so we're going to have to make sure every ounce of this game is developed perfectly as far as the levels go. Um, and that's where they also, I think, came up with the ruins, uh, the Chozo ruins, which are these enormous, like, huge areas with pretty much huge vertical, like, buildings in the middle of them. Um, so, after you've defeated 38 of the Metroids, uh, finished them all off, you can now go and face the Queen Metroid. So, when you're going to face the Queen Metroid, it's really, really awesome because you actually, uh, there's this moment when you're, you're in morph ball form and you have to go right underneath this egg. It's obviously a Metroid egg. But you're going right underneath this Metroid egg, which is above you, and the screen freezes, the music source starts to freak out, and your counter starts freaking out too. So you go from one Metroid needed to, I think it goes to nine. So now you know, okay, now I gotta deal with more Metroids, and then you start fighting the regular Metroids as you're making your trip to the Queen Metroid. Um, Regular Metroids are a bit of a pushover compared to the Mega Metroid, but as far as the Zalf Alpha and Gamma Metroids, uh, the regular Metroids are superior in every way when it comes to difficulty. So you get to the Queen Metroid, and the Queen Metroid, you drop in on her room. There is no pause functionality when fighting the Queen Metroid. So um, if you're looking at the screenshot right now, you'll notice that it's in higher quality than all the other ones, and that's because of the fact that I could not physically press the start button and pause it to take a screenshot or take a picture or whatever. So I fought the Queen Metroid and I died a lot. Uh, I was pumping 150, 160 missiles into its mouth and it was not dying. Um, it kept killing me before I could kill it. So um, this is my one looking at the guide moment. I went on a guide and found out that a quicker way to kill um, the Queen Metroid is she'll lunge in with her mouth, you shoot her in the mouth, she will freeze, you turn into morph ball form, jump into her mouth, she'll swallow you, and then you can lay bombs inside of her and blow her up and she'll spit you back out, repeat, rinse and repeat, and you'll defeat her. And that's pretty impressive. For a Game Boy game, I can't even fathom uh, playing that back, you know, a long time ago and thinking, wow, you can do this, you know. That's something that I see in nowadays games, but they never have those kind of development choices for a boss fight in those old school days. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty cool. But anyway, long story short, you kill the Queen Metroid, um, you go into the room that has the baby, the egg, Metroid egg, and it opens, sees Samus, and the baby Metroid automatically starts hovering around Samus. Uh, so you just pretty much, there's no explosions, no nothing set. Um, no time bomb set or anything like that. Metroid 2 sort of ends on a, a little bit of a lull because all you're doing is walking out with this baby Metroid destroying all the bricks in your path. So that's Metroid 2 Return of Samus uh, for the Game Boy. Pretty awesome game. Um, I'm not sure where I'd put it on the scale for myself quite yet when it comes to Metroid 1 versus Metroid 2, but I do think it's amazingly well developed. Uh, and I do think it's worth checking out for sure, and i once again disappointed that I did not check it out sooner. So catch us on our next one. We've actually got our first Let's Play up for Super Metroid already, but uh, Super Metroid is our next game, and that one is actually a Let's Play, so you get to watch it be played as you hear me talk. So um, make sure to catch that, and thanks for watching our second Let's Talk.